Okay. Well, welcome to the sixth round of the Tuesday Night Marathon here at the Mechanics Institute in San Francisco. Um, tonight's lecture, we have a bit more of Magnus. He's back in another tournament. He's just on fire these days. Um, rediscovered his mojo, Joe. Um, and he's now leading this tournament in Grenke, which is in Germany. And there's some very strong players there, Anon, Vachier, Legrave, our own Fabiano <coughs> Caruana. Um, but there's some German players that make it a, a bit interesting. Instead of everybody being above 2750, you have some of the, the locals, some 2600 players, and um, one younger player who's, who's having kind of a tough time there. Um, and we'll, we'll get to Magnus, but uh, he, he's won two games and drawn two games, and those have been grind out wins in the end game, not, not as entertaining as his last tournament. So we're gonna start with one of the other participants of the Grenke tournament, uh, Peter Svidler. And uh, Svidler is half a point back of the, of the leaders now. And he was playing a strong German chess grandmaster, George Mayer. Fiddler had the white pieces, and the game began a French defense. So they played classically, both knights out, and Fiddler advanced right away on the e5, the Steinitz variation, going back to the first world champion. Uh, Mayer retreats, and F4 helps uh, solidify the center because black hits at the D pawn, which is the other one defending E5. So both sides develop classically towards the center. Um, Fiddler develops the bishop, controlling the dark squares. Pawn takes, knight takes D4. And now, Mayer plays this very ambitious move is the, on the black side. Plays queen to b6, sort of eyeing the bishop on e3, but also hitting the pawn on uh, b2. And the most ambitious thing for white to do here is to gambit the uh, pawn on b2, which is what Fiddler did. So, Mayer takes the pawn, Rook chases the queen back, and Fiddler play develops. Bishop b5, so he's ready to castle and adds pressure on this diagonal. Now he's threatening the pawn, so um, Mayer exchanges the knights. Bishop takes the knight. Bishop back to b4, or develops to b4. With, okay, it's, black is trying to get ready to castle, trying to annoy white a bit with the pin. Um, Spiddler chases the queen away, but goes to a5, which is a uh, good square, and now a3, gives you the choice whether you give up the bishop, which could be trouble because the white bishop would take, attacking the queen and can go to b4, preventing castling. So you don't want to give up the dark squares that easily. So he may have retreated bishop to e7, which is the theory. And now you could castle his white but the, the next move is more interesting. You advance immediately, trying to cause trouble in the center <coughs> while uh, black is still undeveloped. And certainly black doesn't want to castle in this position because well, bishop takes knight and pawn to f6, so pawn to f6 immediately. You're ripping open the king side and the white pieces are going to quickly swarm over there with a quick checkmate. So on pawn to f5, 
black really has to take the pawn on f5. And now you can say at least your, your two pawns up for the moment. And Spidler plays the theoretical move. Um, actually, this, this was first played by me 20, uh, four years ago, and we'll get back to that in a second. Even though you're offering the trade of queen, you're well-developed and the centralized knight can um, cause trouble in the end game. And in this game, uh, Mayer decided to trade the queens and we get to the, this end game. I'll, I'll first show you the original game from this position though. I was uh, on the white side and Robert Hubner, a German grandmaster, was on the, um, the black side. So Hubner sees, well, you can do this, check in the end game, and uh, this knight is gonna cause this bishop to retreat to this square, but he thought first he'll give a check. And if the pawn interposes, then he'll trade the queens and the bishop runs back so that the rook can't run over. And in that game, I decided, well, if we're going to an end game, I want the rook to have some options and <coughs> move the king to d1. And then instead of going into the end game, Hubner thought, well, now white's not castled. Black's a pawn up. Um, in one move, black is going to castle. And so he decided to stay in the middle game and retreat with the queen. Thinking the, the white uh, king would have some, some trouble here. Um, but you see, white's pieces are very active. So here I, I sat and thought for about 15 minutes and found a, bit, uh, a flaw in the uh, black's position because I went knight to f6 check. Um, and really black has to take the sacrifice because things are going to open up anyway. So he may as well get a piece out of it. So pawn takes the knight on f6 and simply recapture and you look at the position and say, well, okay, there's, there's a lot of open lines here and this king is right in the center. So, um, it's um, not very easy for the black side. And Hubner couldn't find anything better than to castle because he, to get off of this E line. But uh, now it just flows from the white side. Uh, anyone want to suggest a move for white here? Rook G3. <coughs> Rook G3 check very good because you, you cannot take the rook. The queen Six. simply comes in with check mm. and to g7 mate. Yeah. So Hubner had to um, had to move his king over here, yeah. and the next move is probably very automatic. Two queen h6 just charge in, and you know you look well. There could be some problems here, but. <laughs> Black has to deal with the very immediate problem of checkmate. Wow. So Hubner played rook to g8. Uh, and uh, well, the next move also comes very easily. You just come in there. Wow. And it, there's simply no way out here. <laughs> you're, you're threatening to take checkmate, and if knight takes pinning, that, that still doesn't help, you're still pinned on that diagonal. So, uh, yeah. oh my God. he actually uh, tried to um, knight to f8, but then seeing rook takes rook check, and he, he just resigned. Yeah. Is this still there? Uh, well, he's, he's still around, but he, he doesn't play very much oh, anymore. Yeah. And this, this game was from 1995, so oh, wow. 
quite some time ago. Twenty-four years ago. Twenty-four years ago. And I was very curious to see this opening happening again um, right in this super tournament in Grenfell. But uh, George Mayer had seen that game undoubtedly, and he uh, he didn't want to uh, play a middle game, so he plays the end game against uh, Arms. Sorry, there's a knight on d5. He plays the end game against Fiddler. Queen takes. Queen takes, and so that's a threat. Bishop to d8. Hubner and I had discussed this a bit, um, thinking of moves like rook to g3 and such. Uh, neither of us thought of the move that Fiddler played today. <coughs> rook to c3. Which, uh, he must have prepared before the game. And nowadays everyone having uh, some very strong computer programs, mm -hmm. or perhaps that suggested mm -hmm. that. But very nice move from Spidler. He's not afraid of this <coughs> bishop pinning the rook because there's oh, there's always the check that you, you'll have to take that uh, knight on c7. Um, and probably Mayer should push this bishop around a bit. But in fact, he did this right away and went right into Spidler's idea. But knight check. Bishop had to take it, rook takes. And you have an end game where um, black is a pawn ahead, but white has the two bishops, a rook on the seventh, developed, and very active play. So despite being a pawn ahead, uh, black is under pressure. Um, <laughs> Mayor chases the rook away, retreats. Uh, knight f8. So, so that black can develop the light squared bishop. Um, Fiddler repositions his bishop to a, a powerful square. Um, and now Mayer plays bishop d7 which gives uh, an interesting option for Sidler. I mean, he wanted to develop quickly, try to trade some pieces off. But Sidler chooses to take the knight on f8, so now threatening rook to d3, and um, Mayer <laughs> gets a bishop of opposite color position where pawns are even. But still, bishops of opposite color can be very dangerous. If there were no rooks on the board, it would be completely a draw. But the rooks can create a lot of play. <laughs> so rook g8 had to be played. Bishop f6, check. King g7. And uh, how to get activity for, for uh, White. And that's been a really sneaky move. Yes. Maybe it's not best, but it's really sneaky. He plays rook to d1, trying to activate both the rooks with check. And this really confused me. He, he should probably be greedy and take the pawn and, uh, <laughs> well, let's check. Rook c7, so it, it looks very dangerous, but um, maybe black can be all right here. He, uh, he decided not to be brave. And there, there you always have to worry a bit when your opponent offers you something and then you're a little tentative and say, well, I'm afraid to go into his idea. And that's what happened here. He, Simply push the pawn to f4 when he should have been really greedy and taken taken that pawn with check. Um, 
Uh, Played back to see. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I'm totally wrong. Uh, I thought he was going to play book H3 at the end of this and the end of the H1 and threatened the wooden, you know, not come off over it. If you go check from King down and King moves in rook H3, yes, you, you could. You can also double. It's very, it's very complicated. Yeah. Very active position for both sides. He, he tried to get activity this way, and Sridhar now blocked him. And when he took the pawn, here uh, Sridhar decided to be sneaky again <laughs> and uh, moved with check out of the way. Um, so that king is uh, under some pressure, whichever way it goes. And he retreated to e8, thinking this looked like the safest square. And now Schwitzer took the pawn. So pawns are even, four pawns each. Well, White even has more isolated pawns. But this bishop is really powerful, kind of splitting the black forces in two. Um, now, it's a little difficult for Black in any case. He plays a very natural move, and Spidler makes a, a very nice maneuver. Comes up to d4, and he's planning to get on that h line, just as Mike said. Um, so Mayer stopped this, look to h4, and pawn to h6. Looks like Black has everything covered. Again, you're, you're thinking bishops of opposite color, it's going to be a draw. But um, mm -hmm. <laughs> in fact, black, black is very quickly in, in very serious trouble. Does anyone want to suggest a move? No. G4. G4 is it. It's not only ready to double rooks on the H line, also trying to break through that way. This H line is um, just a terror to, to deal with. And he, he couldn't find a really good response. Um, bishop to b5. Oh, I'm sorry. Rook is on D3. It was King E8, Bishop 6, Rook D4, Rook D6, Rook C to D3. Sorry, they did Rook here, threatening mate here, and then this move with the Rook and Rook and G4. So uh, the Rook was on <laughs> D3. So Bishop B5 attacked it. And he kept on the d8 square. Then trying to get some some uh, extra defense there. And the winning breakthrough is pawn to g5. So there, there's no way to stop the rooks from coming through. The final position he took with the rook. Rook came back to defend the back rank. But Svither calmly doubled here. <laughs> it, it's an end game, but there's just no way out of checking. <laughs> the white rook is coming here. You either trade it or white trades, and the other rook comes in for mate. <laughs> well, it, it was interesting, is it? Even though it was an end game, there was a strong attack all the way through. So it was nice to see this variation revived from the white side. I had a personal interest in that. <laughs> and since Magnus is back, I have to show you something of Magnus. Um, but he, uh, he didn't have any brilliant quick games. They were all long, grinding out games. He, he played Anand in the third round, and um, he got 
a very big advantage, probably a winning position, but on our ma managed to squirm out of it. Uh, and that's and then he played Fabiano Caruana in the fourth round, where Magnus had black. If we have time, we'll get to that game. It, it wasn't a thrilling game, but um, uh, Magnus couldn't quite win that. I, I watched the, the end of the game against Vallejo, and uh, we had a uh, Russian bishop against uh, Magnus bishop. And I was wondering what, what, whether the Vallejo just misplay it, or is it, is that like winning chances, or is it drawn, or what? Well, that's excellent. <laughs> Question, Richard, and I'm very glad you asked that because that's oh. exactly what we're going to okay. look at right now. <laughs> I also found that very interesting. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm, I won't go through the whole game. I think I'll just get to. Um, the point where it's very interesting, where they're down to what looks like a drawn position, and um, Magnus proceeds to just grind him out. So, um, Paco uh, Francisco Vallejo Pons, he had the white side. Magnus had black. So we, we reach a position. Each side has a bishop, knight, and rook. One pawn each. Maybe even if you win a pawn, it seems, what good would that do? You, you would think just to draw. Um, but Magnus, he always finds something. He makes, he makes it as difficult as it possibly can be. Um, this position, he plays pawn to f4, and okay, you, you can't take that pawn. Yeah. A knight will take check, and it's a four. So uh, Vallejo was maybe going to lose a pawn, but first he attacks the knight, threatening to take it with check. Magnus retreats, and um, Vallejo attacks the bishop, saying, you can have my knight, I'll um, I'll just take your bishop. And again, if you win one pawn, that may not be so much. So Magnus doesn't take the knight immediately. He just leaves the problem there. Um, it's going to win a pawn anyway. So Leo retreats and takes the pawn. So it is a pawn up for um, black. But it's only one pawn. You should be able to get to a um, position where you can sacrifice the knight or bishop for the pawn, and it, it'll be a draw. Yes? Uh, I may be mistaken, but after black played knight f8, um, was it possible for white to play gf4 check to give me a king f4 rook f6 check and rook f8? Well, there, there was a bishop on b8, and the so bishop would have taken the pawn on f4 four. and won the pin knight on b3. Very good. It was sneaky way back here. <laughs> yeah, you could do a discovery, but then I'll just take it. Except you're, you're right. When you're a pawn down against Magnus, even if it's drawn, you probably feel bad. You, you know you're in for trouble. So the computer gives a move like this and says, well, it, it'll be a draw. If you have the best computer, it, it's going to draw the position on the right side. Um, Diego doesn't play badly. He offers the trade of rooks. Um, rook 
Okay, three. Any sets? Again, for the sequel, might have been uh, a little more to the point. But this is this is a drawn position. Um, rook b6, rook a2. Um, now threatening pawn to g2. Rook b4, so if pawn to g2, rook g4 check takes it. Um, knight comes to e6. Now knight f4 check is, is uh, probably a threat, yeah, because then you'll have a discovered uh, check. So I have checks. King comes back. Bishop c6. Um, and the pawn comes to g2. Bishop takes on g2. Knight f4 check. So we have to give up the exchange. Rook takes, bishop takes. And once again, this is a theoretically drawn position. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll stress again theoretically. So for a while, Pons uh, makes some very uh, accurate defensive move. Bishop f3, the knight is guarding the dark squares, so not easy to get in. Bishop back to b8, knight to g3, king to g5, knight e2, so the king can't come in. Just giving uh, white the move. And Magnus makes a little pro um, progress. He's just trying to push uh, the white king down. And he knows it's a draw. Bayeo Pons, Pons knows it's a draw, but hard to be completely accurate. Um, I wonder, well, you can't move the knight. You can't move the bishop, because there's nowhere you can move the bishop that you don't lose it or the knight. So you have to move the king. King comes to uh, f2. Magnus checks. And maybe I would have gone back. Pierre Pawn comes here and he says, well, you're not going to checkmate me with your king so far away. Um, but Magnus keeps him in a box. And here. And this part of the game, I like a lot. Um, anyone want to suggest a plan for the black side? Not, not a specific move, but... Very good. You like Magnus. And Magnus says he has time. So this king is going just way over here. <laughs> Bishop moves, uh, king moves, uh, bishop goes back, That's not what I got. bishop e4, king f6, sorry, bishop f3, king e5, bishop g2, king to d6, bishop e4, king to c5, so a nice trip for the king. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, these just stayed there. The king just wandered around. Check. Okay, you can't go here. Have to guard the knight. Um, rook back to d8. Still very hard to do something to the, uh, the white side. Bishop e4. King c4, king f1, not sure that's a good move. Um, now you put yourself under pressure. Magnus goes check. Uh, 
Can you give me a move for the white side? King, King E1. You play like a 2750 player. <laughs> <laughs> play like Alejo Pons. And that is the decisive mistake of the game. <laughs> you were asking Richard. Um, I think he could have played a little better to make life easier for him, but this is the moment where he misses the draw. What, what do you play? Well, there's, yes, you can drop a piece or you can play king to g, g2. That looks like a drop. Uh, Check, and we go back. And when you take the knight, Oh, wow. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> you, if you had been in Spain, you could have applauded that, except he, he missed this. Oh, my God. It shows you just not so easy to draw magnets. Wow. There were no passing moves for black to keep uh, white and this long? Uh, ran it through a computer check and it's, it's oh, okay. nothing that could win the game. But I, I think you'll all forgive him for playing king to e1. <laughs> <laughs> the other looks ridiculous. But now in fact, black is winning the game. The, the king's in a good position, the rooks cut you off, the bishops got you trapped. Um, so he went bishop f2 check um, and now uh, okay, this, this could be hard why, why not king to f1 now um, oh did I Oh, I think I think maybe you could you would retreat here or there, and it's a bit different. Okay. Well, without dwelling too long on on this, um, he went king to d two. Rook d eight check. Um, king to c two. Bishop e three, and the black pieces aren't coordinated to push the king away. So, um, bishop to f3 to guard the knight, but now the uh, king is pushed to the back rank, and even worse, he's pushed into the corner here. King threatening checkmate. Where is the knight to go? Knight c1 check. King to a3. Knight back to e2. But check and the king has to go completely into the corner. And after rook to b8, uh, Vallejo Pons resigned. So the bishop is going to give you a lethal check on the long diagonal. I, I can feel his pain, all that suffering for moves and moves, and you know it's a draw, you feel you're one of the world's top grandmasters, you should make a draw, but it's just very difficult. Wait, was that not to be a draw like many years ago, or is it just... Uh, yes, in all the old Endgame books, this is stated as a draw. In the table bases, it's a draw. Um, if you have two of the top computers playing, to, they'll make a draw. But I think it's, it's really great to see the uh, top human players play this out. Some, some of the old days, some players would just agree to a draw when they had a position they'd known as drawn. Um, Okay, I think now we get to uh, some games with excitement in the middle games, so we have to move on to that action-packed tournament, the Tuesday Night Marathon. And 
let's start with um, Joel Marcus against David Askin. <gasps> So here was a power cam. And Joel with white, David Askin with black. We get the exchange variation, which Fisher used against Petrosian in their match. So it looks a bit innocuous, but white can get some uh, good attack sometimes. Now we have six. Usually the bishop comes out to f4, but um, Joel gives him the chance to pin on g4, and he plays his usual variation instead, on to g6. Castles, bishop f5. Okay, maybe white should take immediately, but rookie one. Bishop g7. He, he takes now, so black has doubled pawns. King side's a little weakened, but strong pawns in the center. And a control over the e4 square. Queen d3. Knight e4. It's a very nice knight. But it'd be good to just develop, control some squares. Um, Joel charges ahead, wanting to get pawn to f3, but uh, this is a, a risky pawn sacrifice. Bishop takes, pawn takes e5, knight takes e5, queen h3 attacking the uh, f5 pawn. Um, so, David plays knight g4, figuring he'll have a nice check on the mm -hmm. diagonal if pawn to f3 comes. Um, and Joel decides to stop that trouble before it starts. Was knight g4, it may have been forced, yes? He could have gone pawn to e6. Was pawn also. 6, f3, queen to 6, bishop to 3, queen to 2, knight to 2. Um, I was wondering about that one. Yes, yes. Uh, the computer seems to think that's okay for, for black. For black, yeah. It's complicated though, something to be afraid of. Yeah, okay. This one hanging. But that, yeah, it looks like the complications are fine for black there. Okay. This one's also kind of complicated. Bishop e3. And, uh, Knight takes, queen takes, pawn to e6, develop the knight, um, queen to g5. So, okay, good idea if you're a pawn up trying to um, get the queens off, and black's, black's better in this position. But white's got some activity, and after the queen trade, um, white at least has some active pieces. <coughs> the pawns are doubled, but yes, you'd like to you'd like to be uh, a black side. Um, a six retreat, and here's where the game gets very interesting. Um, 
Joel decides to really attack. Rook H3 does develop. Rook to D3, Rook D6, and now Rook H6, and we're going to see an attack uh, by White in the end game against this weak pawn in the open file. So it's, it's really a, a flank attack, and you're committing yourself to the king side. That's kind of a dangerous thing, but if it works, it works. So king to g7, double on the file, threatening these checks. The knight comes back. But Joel has a plan. He's not just stopped there. Pawn to f3, and you can see his plan. It's pawn to g4 and g5, breaking through, pushing the knight away, and getting the rooks to uh, crash through on the king side. But David gets greedy. He goes for a pawn, and pawn to g4 comes. So, what would you do on the block side? Would you, would you be greedy, just snatch a pawn? Oh, be fine. Oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see what your appetite is like. G, G5? Well, it's, it's black's, black's, black's move. Black's yeah, white, white certainly wants to go G5. You can't really stop him from playing G5. The question is probably whether he needs to capture a G4 first. <coughs> and then F G4, F G4, knight E4, and then rook H7, King F6. So you, you could take on G4. Um, he just took the pawn. He just wanted the pawn, and pawn to G5 came. And white is crashing through on the on the king side. There is a minor problem though. Very good, very good. It's it's not just that you're greedy and hungry for pawns. It's when you take this pawn. There's the big problem down here. <laughs> so uh, Joel took the knight with check, ready to crash through, <laughs> and, and, and the king goes backwards to f8. But you know, if you just had one more tempo, <laughs> <laughs> but you've got this huge problem down here. And there was no uh, no really good way out. Um, yes, knight to b3 <coughs> stops the checkmate. But he just moved one square, saying, "Still, you got a problem." And they no way out. He, he threw the knight in, but uh, that also didn't stop it for long. And. Joel had to resign. But I like that both players really went for it. And then we have another uh, very exciting game. Jonah Bush against William Gray. Jonah Bush is white, William Gray is uh, black. He's 
starts out as Sicilian, and um, Jonah plays the Alpen variation. So counter in the center, the prescribed response, but you get a very open <coughs> position. Pawn to e5. So if the pawn takes, you have a choice of an end game or to recapture. But uh, Jonah just defends, <coughs> developing. Pawn takes d4, pawn takes d4, develop. Knight attacks the queen, and it gets pinned by a developing move. So now Jonah recaptures on e5. The rook could always retake the queen on d1 if he trades. Um, so um, Jonah first threatens the knight on c3. So you didn't, didn't want to capture the pawn e5 with the same idea? Not yet. I think you could have. You could have taken it. But first there's a threat on c3. Um, Jonah retreats, really breaking the pin. Um, developing move on pawn to a3. So breaking the pin. And now he decides to, instead of bishop takes, three, three, bishop take, he decides to take with check. Okay. Jonah doesn't want an end game. He just develops. Bishop to c5. Knight f3. And this has gone pretty well for white. All the pieces are out. So a little even development. Queen to f5. Jonah castles. William castles. And what do you do exactly? I kind of like this plan that Jonah played. Let's take a little space. Pawn to b4. Bishop retreats here. And advance. <coughs> Bishop doesn't want to get exchanged. So rook to c1. Bishop g6, knight c5. Just a little hard for black to develop. Now everything's symmetrical, but nicer for white. Um, okay. It's a good developing move because you don't want to move your bishop yet. And here I might do something else for the white side, such as rook to e1, or queen to b3. Um, Jonah attacks the queen, the knight on h4. Okay, queen threatens mate, but uh, g3 is a very welcome response to that, controlling some squares. William jumps in the center with the knight, attacking the bishop. But the bishop has a good square on c4. And then he decides it's now time to get rid of this <coughs> troublemaking knight, because it has to be recaptured with the pawn. Of course, you don't want to take the pawn and lose your queen to bishop f7 check. But anyway, it's a, an isolated pawn. Oh, excuse me, he didn't even recapture right away. He threw in rook to e1, a on the queen. That retreated, and then he recaptured <coughs> on c5. So, now comes some action. Um, 
William decides to try to weaken this f3 square by attacking the knight on a4. And then it takes the knight. But then William throws in the check on f3. And uh, here you have, let me count, one, two, three, four legal moves. And which of them do you want to pick on the white side? I'll give you a hint. This is not the move you want to do. Bishop, bishop h3 check, and uh, you're a goner. Anybody for a choice? H1 is nice and uh, secure down there. Okay. Um, he actually chose queen, king to g2. That's, um, and we'll get back to that. A uh, lot of things happening right now. But this is a, some point in the game where you get to the surreal what makes it so interesting. And one of your four legal moves, the one you'd probably exactly. last be saying, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> it's legal. Yes, yeah, it's legal, but it's not so what's the problem? Giving up your queen for a knight. And now I will leave it for you to tell me why is that even good? I, I was hesitant to even suggest that because I was trying to find out what Yeah, you first have to get the idea, some imagination of uh, something's possible, something that looks ridiculous. Yes, then you can retreat. <clears throat> and at this point, you, you might also count. OK, how much do you have for the queen? You actually have um, a bishop and a knight. So you're, you're clearly down three points that way. But, all right, not many squares for the queen. Um, you know, really, really the only decent one is here. Yes, just take the pawn with the knight. You would have to get this far and stop and think, and you'd see you have all these threats. You're, um, you're developed. Uh, a lot of these combinations, they start with something just a little wrong, which is that the black side hadn't gotten those pieces out yet. So you have some tremendous threats. You have the um, knight takes the rook check, bishop g5 or c3. Rook takes d2 doesn't work. You get made it in one move. <coughs> and suddenly it's whites that's, that's having all the fun here. In fact, I, I have to uh, give credit to Mr. Winslow, who went through this game with the computer. And, uh, I just the complete credit the computer. So, so could Black have tried the same idea as 96 by playing g5? The knight was short of squares. Uh, we, we can get back to that. Well, white should act, or black should actually give up the queen and hope to, hope to draw a pawn down. In this position? Uh, yes. Uh, otherwise, you just lose very quickly. But that was um, rook f8. Uh, I think your queen just runs out of squares. Um, do we go? Do we? Attack the queen, and um, you have to go to a light square where you win it. For, um, any square your queen goes to is going to be a discovered check that wins. Mm -hmm. So, um, unfortunately, Jonah didn't didn't play this. This. Uh, we'll go. 
back to your question very quickly. Um, this position was 9. 24. Um, 21. Knight was on D1. Knight was on D1. Knight was on D1. Knight was on E7. Knight was on D4. Um, this position here. And you were saying pawn to G5 instead. Um, <coughs> Yeah, instead of knight to g6. Instead of knight to g6. Okay. Um, let's see. Since since the computer didn't um, throw out this move, there ought to be something good for the. Um, I can I can think of maybe rook takes knight queen takes. Um, queen to h5, pawn takes knight, bishop to g5. How is this one working? Once again, you've got some development. If knight checks, queen takes it, and you win f7. Is that uh, maybe that's not enough. Okay. Um, Yeah, this I would I would really worry about this if uh, if there hadn't been a check with the computer. Um, He takes your knight. Um, then we oh, okay, you can take that. Yes, yeah, so we can't, can't quite do this. Um, this takes pawn, doesn't quite work. Are you sure you couldn't do that? I mean, there's, there might have been rookie seven there. I mean, the two bishops are very strong on the diagonal. There, there's, there's things, queen here takes. There might be bishop f4. Yeah, bishop um, g5 knight f3, right? Yeah, bishop, that would be knight f3. Um, you, may, you may have bishop f4, and the bishop's coming to e5, or... Um, yeah, we have to... Rook takes knight up there. Knight g6? Queen g6. Okay. Right. Oh, the, the queen would be attacked. So actually, um, with the time, I, I'll have to, um, yeah, I'm afraid I didn't check the computer's response on that. And um, But there, there ought to be a tactic for white here. And maybe it's rook to e4 and rook to f4. OK, that, that could work. Um, this this may work out for what you cover your weak squares. You've got these bishops and things, and the f7 squares would um, would be a bit involved. Um, and I don't have time to show you any of uh, Fabiano against um, Magnus. That game came down to uh, Magnus having a rook and knight against a, a rook. Um, which, uh, just like the other ending, that's such a theoretical draw. Um, one 
that Walter Brown had me play out for a lot of moves one time, but Magnus, you know, he played a few moves against Fabiano and just traded the rooks <coughs> because there's no good winning chances. But, okay, thank you.